Hello friends and welcome back to the Rally Cry Halftime Show as we spend a little time talking about things, playing a little game, whatnot as the teams get set up for their next game and at this point to be down for Supernova to reset a little bit because after 30 minutes finally falling to the onslaught that's AoE Gold. Yeah, it was a tough one. I mean, Supernova showed us some good moments in the beginning, especially the fact that Azog and Chookies were able to, in the 2v2, get some advantages over Lynx and Skytech, who we value very highly, myself included. So they had some good looks there. It managed to give Supernova things like that first Dragon. Dragoon was doing well topside. But as, as it happened, I mean, this is the largest difference in seed that we have here so far in terms of matchup. And AoE really showed why, being able to really bring it back and not really falter despite falling behind a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like it, it's literally first seed coming into uh, 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 coming out of NACL to eight seed. Well, fourth, I should say, technically coming out of the OQs, right? So just literally as wide as you can go in terms of the gap that is currently present here. And you know what? To, 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 to their credit, Subrova didn't do too bad, as you mentioned. Yeah. It definitely didn't look like that, that gap that you're describing here, but. <laughs> Uh, more on to our Rally Cry halftime show. So I know coming into the promotion tournament, not everybody is quite so familiar with all the players that are competing and stuff. So I thought it might be fun to do a little most likely two. So for anyone who might have graduated high school, might be familiar with these at the end. So we're going to have a little prompt most likely to pee their pants in front of the school. I don't know. That's not actually one. And then... <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. What the hell? <laughs> I hope nobody was bored of that. That's that's disrespectful. That, <laughs> that one was that one was sing a little bit. Our questions are a little bit nicer, but uh, we'll talk going on forward about who's most likely to be that thing. We all all understand. All good. Yeah. See. You. All right. So first off in this, most likely to get a pen to this series. So who just going on forward in this series, who has the best shot of proving themselves here in the promotion tournament and adding a pen to their name? Pen hmm. kill. Okay, okay, you know what? I think I got one right off the bat. All right, go. We already saw the Azog popping off on the Jin, literally because the early advantages got almost quadra there in the team fight with his positioning, right? And it was big old crits. So I think if he continues to have a performance like that, he could definitely do it. He does just know. like, yep, that's a, that's convincing enough for me. No, well, I mean, I was going to name someone else, but it was just more like, yeah, mm, okay. Anyways, my turn. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say Lynx, probably. I, for, for the most part, AD carry is kind of biased toward, or uh, kind of biased when it comes to Penta kills. It's most likely going to go over to them. So I'm leaning more towards Lynx in this matchup. Right, we've seen some good performances throughout uh, all of spring from him in Skytech. We've seen him get pretty close. I don't think he actually got any Penta kills, but maybe this series could be that time. All right, well, we'll do a question that's a little less biased to the ADC. Is it just a little bit? But in this series, who is most likely to clutch up, especially to at this point, it is the chance for Supernova to take this into a game three and also for AOE Gold, this is the chance to just close things out. So who's most likely to pop off? Oh. Oh, this is easy. It's it, it's got to be the man in the mid lane, Darkwings. Isaac Chow is, okay. has been doing his thing the entire time. We even saw in the last game as well about how, about how you know, him and Winnie kept on linking up over and over again to have the advantage of the mid lane as well over the victor. And on his signature Casio, he clutched up once. He can do it again. Fair enough. You, we're, we're in agreement of the same team, Ravish, but I'm going to say I'm actually going to go with Winnie because oh. he's been a big part of AoE's success throughout the split. We, we talk about it all the time in Challengers League. This team lives or die, live or dies by Winnie in the jungle. He's the one who makes the calls. He's the one who leads the team. And whenever they do clutch it up, it does end up being because of him in large part. So that's my answer. The correct, unbiased, irrefutable choice. <laughs> Game These are work. supposed to be opinions. Are you allowed to say that? <laughs> I mean, I, my opinion's correct, so sure. That's not what a... Okay, all right, fine, sure. Man. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> moving on. Flexes, yes, sorry. Into our next one. But most likely to have the biggest level up into next split. Looking ahead into summer. I mean, there's a lot of players that be kind of newer, still getting a grasp of things, still learning. This is all about developing. So who do we think in the short term is right on that cusp of that level up? Hmm. You down? You first. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say Quacker. It feels, is because part of this is going to be contingent on who we think is going to make it to Challengers League. And I mean, y'all saw the graphs. We're, even though, uh, you know, we're hoping the best for Supernova, uh, I'm leaning more towards other teams. AoE, of course, being my most likely. And I lean to Quacker because he's been playing for a good amount of time. He was playing in Collegiate when he left the semi-pro scene. But that year in 2021, where we talked about in pre-show, being one of the most improved players, someone who showed so much growth, is someone who I think still has a lot of more room to grow in the future. So if this is a permanent change, because of course he's coming in for Gamsu last second, uh, I'm liking Quacker's chances for filling this most likely two question. Mm. Okay, so we are in agreement of of the Let's actual, go. you know, role and and we and got him. We got. Oh but wait, it's but, but it's wait, there's more. My end, yeah. it's gonna be Dragon. Look, Ooh. I've been a Dragon with Stamp quite some time back when mm. I saw him, you know, like, no you know, bias. bossing things out on the dairy. Of course, no bias at all, man. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. as more recently as well, he's shown his deep champion pool, played the Alawi recently as well. So I'm, True. and I'm I'm personally a big Alawi fan. So, and I've seen what this guy can <laughs> do, it? right? Exactly. <laughs> Look, the, overall though, with the wealth of experience that this guy offers, he's been a leader for so many different teams, you know, been around a lot of different, like, you know, high level coaches well too, and carries his own vision of the game. And I think if he's allowed to have a team where, you know, he's more indexed on, then, you know, we can definitely show off more, you know, on what he's capable of, but he usually takes a supporter role. He does what's best for the team, which sometimes may put a bit down the shadows, but it's gotta be the boy Dragoon. And plus he says guacamole to everything. I don't get it, but it's funny. But you're here for it? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so they, so responding guacamole to everything, good at league is what it's I'm- cor It's a direct correlate, obviously, exactly. is what exactly. he's trying to it's say. It's simply fact. It's noted yeah. down in the dictionary. Guac equals good at league is defined. Yeah, I bet if you look in the dictionary, the word guac's not even there. So nice try. <laughs> That's cap. <laughs> I'm gonna find a dictionary right now. <laughs> yeah? Well, you look for a dictionary. We'll go on to the next question. Beatdown, I know you talked about that your answer on who's going to be the biggest level up going into next split is then contingent on the fact that it'll be a team that makes it to challengers. What about looking into next year? Because sometimes, like in the case of our most wow. valuable prospect, we're looking down the line at, you know, there is a ceiling. They might not be quite there yet. Maybe they need a little bit of time. Maybe they need to cook a little bit longer. But we know yeah, yeah. down the line they're going to be a okay mm. so so the biggest is, is relative right they, they have the biggest amount of growth not necessarily reaching the highest level am i interpreting that correctly it can be interpreted however you want honestly all right well <laughs> in that case i'm interpreting it that exact way okay. and this is gonna be this is gonna be so controversial but oh. i'm gonna say kizno i'm gonna get dms oh. for this but i'm gonna say kizno because he's this is literally like his first split paying competitive yeah. Uh, talking to the coach from Supernova says that, you know, there's a lot of things for him to work through because he's a much newer player working on more uh, fundamental things. But already, I think I've seen some good things from him. So give him a year of coaching, competitive experience, things like that. I think that will be the biggest growth, not necessarily the highest level, but the biggest amount of growth. I don't think that has to be controversial either. I feel like, too, like yeah, you say that. Every, everybody's new at some point. Everybody yeah, joins a yeah. team for the first time at some point. Everybody has to get coached or learn at some point. You don't come out of the womb all of a sudden challenger level in League of Legends, all Maybe right? Like, you, you gotta... <laughs> I know that you, you are. You got a secret account sure, we don't so. know about, Ravish? What are you talking about? <laughs> so, you know, like, someone that's like, hey, I'm seeing good things now, and I'm just waiting down the line for when they get coached a little bit more, get a little mm. bit more time. Like, I like that, so... Yeah. Yeah. I think we're finally in agreement this year, Beatdown. I am hey. definitely of the opinion that kids like you're saying, 
it's bro's literally first four months playing this game yeah, yeah. like he's been on like one of the team you know that they don't have a ton of experience on their side and now with the right environments a lot of fostering he's a guy who's really open to feedback a selfless jungler which is you know beastly rare at times because you've seen a lot of key yeah. performances for a lot of different junglers and yeah. he's already shown the proactivity to set up plays for this team which i think we need a lot more of as well and I'm a big fan. He's been learning a lot more of his role and expanding his champion pool. So I I agree. Kids know mm. to come up for show for show. All right, real quick, I have to ask, What's Ravish, up? how does it feel to be on the right side of this game segment for the first time? I just want to know. Well, um, I want to welcome you, of course. It's really great to have you here. Hope you stay a while, though I doubt it. Just wanted to ask you. Uh, you know what? Thanks for the question. We done. I'd like to say I feel like opinions aren't facts, so I want to uh -huh. want to go ahead and note that down, and that's all, okay. that's all there is to it. Uh -huh. Everybody can be right, and it's okay that you're wrong sometimes. Thanks. Uh, okay. Hey, at least at the end of the day, we're all on the right side of the broadcast, and the fact that we're all Canadians, we know that Canadians. Hey, you know, like, true, uh, right side of the border. So we are we're right side of the border on that one. So I'm definitely okay with that, no matter what opinions y'all are spouting out over there. But uh. In my opinion, I think we have a game to be getting to. At this point, this is AoE Gold to be trying to close out the series 2-0 to be advancing on over. Or a Supernova can be checking this out into a game three. Show us what they have as the lowest seed coming into this. It's time for the draft, so I'm going to send you two away. Thank you, Sierra. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this, shall we? AoE, Super looking for the run back. Supernova now on the blue side. Uh, blue side has generally been blessed, best side for quite some time, I find. Yeah. So we'll see if that narrative does hold up. Bands as of right now, still, you know, teetering to be the same sort of wavelength. Yeah, and, and just a reminder, the way this tournament is structured, the way everything works, you have to win two series or lose two series. Whatever happens first determines, well, whether or not you make it into NACL come summertime. So it would be a tough loss for Supernova to lose it out early, already have that kind of backs against the wall sort of scenario. But AOE looking really strong in that first game and looking to put them there. Mm -hmm. Both these teams looking to promote going forward. Yep. All they gotta do is win a couple of games, win or lose, right? It's just so just, easy. Just win some games, yeah. Exactly, gosh. Yeah. And right now, AoE has to win theirs. As all the bands do come in, same sort of vein as before, but the only difference being that Greg is banned from Supernova, and this time they prioritize the Varus. Yeah, and this, so they were trying to avoid that handshake coming through here, and Winnie. Uh, or whoever ends up coming through here for their pick could go for a lot of different things. The Caitlyn is still technically up here. We know Lynx plays that one a lot, or they could go that more defensive utility route here. Either way, I'm expecting Lynx to get a pick here. And of course, Winnie to also get one as well. This is more, if this gets locked in, what we see from Winnie, that, that facilitator. He's the one making calls, making plays, and Maokai, despite the nerfs, despite the changes, he's a playmaker. Mm hmm and we've already seen the proximity that Winnie has had towards the entire lane. So it may not be yeah. as much counter jungling going on early on as what with the Graves, but still, Ooh. should still be facilitation. And speaking of uh, facilitating things, that's a Tristana be down. Mm. That's interesting. Um, because of range, uh, I think it's going to be a little tough playing into something like a Varus, unless you get a really good support matchup. But it could also be that flex into the mid lane. I don't recall in recent memory Darkwings ever playing this champ, so I'm a little skeptical of that one. But uh, that's what we got so far from AoE. Mm -hmm. You know, it has been noted that Darkwings doesn't really prefer his more melee matchups to right also on the side of Kizno and Onat. Skirmish heavy on both of these mid laners. And right now, it'll... Uh... It'll be the owner to lock in the victor early on, takes a safe pick just in case it is Rashana mid, and maybe the run back once again for the Olaf matchup up top. Instead, now it's on the AoE side. So that's an interesting one. It could very well be Dragoon also plays the Cassante. So the expectation could be that you pick Cassante on four after banning away the Olaf. So Quacker is just going to get that matchup for himself right off the bat. Mm. And it just means Dragoon has to go for something a little different. We could see, uh, I don't know, maybe we see his uh, Alawi come back. You know about more about top lane matchup. How does that look? Well, uh, Alawi going up against the Olaf, it's not bad, actually, because the okay. main thing is, is that what matters a ton for the early levels for the Alawi is going to be the setting up your tentacles. You want to ideally oh, they have it, yeah. you know, yeah. two around the area. And yep, they knew that was going to come in. That takes that away. I am not very sad. Yeah. Can't talk about it anymore. Hmm. I mean, I mean, looking looking at Maokai Tristana too, running into Alawi, she loves that. So it makes a lot of sense. 
that we're seeing that one come through. And okay, so that pretty much guarantees that it is going to be Lynx running the Tristana in the bot lane. Hmm. And uh, wow, that's uh, a little surprising there. But you are going to be able to get that wave push. Of course, Tristana's passive lets her push waves pretty easily. And that bot prio is something they played a lot for in game one to try and secure Dragon. So it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. But Azog and Chucky's didn't actually come out on top of that. So we'll see if with what they managed to lock in, they do once again. That is, we're not a glass. That should be a great precursor for all of the engage that's there on the AOE side to stop them. And the more the Kaiser, I know it's a hover. I'm not going to get baited by it just it's yet. But it's nothing ever it is, really. Uh, and so we'll see what Dragoon takes for himself. It is the blind lock-in, supposedly. For the you top do need side. front line, so... Yeah, this would be yeah. the Mundo. I like it. I, I, I like it. You need something really tanky. I, you... Probably lane isn't going to be amazing for you into the Olaf, but overall, yeah. late game, once you started stacking up, whether it's Heart Steel, whether it is the... Uh, uh, what's what's the what was the really broken one? Oh my Jack god, show. it's blanking. I mean Jack Show, thank yeah. you. It, the point is he's gonna be able to stack a lot of health, be mm -hmm. a big issue here. And that's why Skytech's locking in the blitz crank. <laughs> oh my god. So that was really the only thing you could have really hoped for. Yeah. Just because a Varus Renata, that's gonna get pushed, that's gonna poke you out. So now you just gotta be able to try and land those rocket crabs, grab the support, and get that lane pressure that way. I'm really happy. Why you have to talk to me? Well, well, I'll tell you why. Because I am a really big Mundo enjoyer. Uh -huh. uh, as we talked about before, I recently am okay. one way from getting a level 7 Mundo. In fact, he is my go-to blind pick in a top lead matchup. Uh, really? He's not Yorick? A, a Yorick blind pick? What am I, stupid? Don't ask that question. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's yeah, it's never going to happen. And before the Doran Shield nerfs, it did not matter what lane I had, I knew I would have been fine. And I think that's what Dragoon is thinking as well. He knows he'll be fine because he frontline for his team and stack up the hard yeah. steel and go wherever he pleases. We'll find out right now, Supernova backs against the wall. AoE looking to go 1-0 up in the promotion tournament. Right again, two wins. That's all you need to make it to NACL in summer. AoE on the cusp of getting win number one and Supernova on the cusp of getting their first lost this is really important of course for both of these teams but especially supernova so they can have that cushion and stay in this upper bracket so far aoe have this comp again wants to do a lot of the skirmishing here you have a lot of all in people who want to run at you run you down but i kind of like supernova's draft because you have that very clear way you want to play you have a great frontliner in dragoon on the mundo you have kizno looking for the all-ins as well as long as bot lane goes your way for Azog and Chookies, I'm, I, I like what Supernova's got. Yeah. That was one of the biggest factors for the last game, and this time it will be, we once again here, we looking for an early invade for anything, and nothing found on either side except a couple of early wards, though. Are you predicting the same sort of early game plan that we saw last game in terms of just a split map for, you know, Dragon for, uh, for Rift, or, you know, much more variation for how we see the fights go out? I'm kind of expecting that when I look at Rift Herald uh, priority, I favor AoE just looking at their top side because at that point, Soul Laner's jungle should be level six. They have really strong alts, really a lot of early damage that they can utilize to win these fights. Oh, whoa! whoa. Okay, this is uh, interesting. Oh wait, this is really good. With the blitz, Chookies has to flash over. Should be dead. A couple more autos and first blood to Lynx. One more to kill. Oh no my God. way. This is so rough. Azok can't even get away. If to get the pull, he's hiding behind the minions. Yeah. Oh, man. That was a really smart invade there okay. from uh, AoE. Uh, oh, Azog. Oh, Azog. Ooh. Okay, nice. Nice feet. Nice feet. Yeah, all good. But we'll just have to stay so far back in lane. Training good with the autos. Pops the ghost. Uh oh, look who's here. Something pull it once again. Oh, the little bit of zig and zag from Winnie, but Chucky's cannot get the trade. That's a three kill what, what, start for Lynx. What, what, what did I say a second ago? Bot lane yeah. needs to go their way. This is quite <laughs> literally the opposite, the antithesis of bot lane going your way. This Tristana wasn't supposed to have the greatest time, even with the Blitzcrank, but that really smart invade where Winnie takes the Raptors, rushes them for level two, and Skytech goes in using that vision they had to get the pull. 
got them that early advantage exactly where they needed it. And this is the big thing too. Again, you see, that's the ward they had there in that push. So they know where they're standing. And because that level two comes through, they get the kill. Yeah, and speaking of getting the kill, Dragoon is gonna have oh, the weak side. Hey. Dragoon uh, did not play weak side top lane. <laughs> and he has been run down by Quacker. So the thing is, Mundo early doesn't yeah. do anything nope. <laughs> anymore. Oh no. Okay, and now Winnie on the Kizno. One Murado right getting burn. the burn. The, the jungle pet should be able to get him. No, no that's his jungle pet. That's his jungle oh, no, pet. Okay. I thought the same thing too for a second, so, <laughs> so I understand. But this is brutal. Kizno cannot farm his own. He's farmed one camp. He can't farm his side of the map, and it's really smart. You know you set him behind. You know Winnie he would just get aggressive. And this is kind of what we were setting up for this guy as a player. Winnie isn't afraid to look for these fights, isn't afraid when he sees that bit of advantage, he's like, oh yeah, hmm. I want it. And he often gets it. Yeah, it is uh, It is what I have to call the uh, solo child mentality. They've been giving <laughs> everything in life and they still want I more. I win these. <laughs> God, it's insane, man. And speaking more on the AOA side as well, Winston was talking about how with the scrims that they've had, Yep. Especially up against all the NSL up. Oh, I'll hold my breath as you get locked in onto one. Azog with one more auto is gone. Trying to survive and needs an assist and does get it. But it's turned around. Links with the advantage has to hop out. Check is a bit too much AP. So Azog will be able to get something back, but ultimately this is 4-0 Tristana. Came to Azog did that with no items, to be fair. Renata was a very good champion, but ultimately, this is what we expect when you get a lead like that. Lynx and Skytech continuously looking for pulls, looking for plays, and Winnie, he's just on perma invade. He gets the respawn Raptors, which is big. That denies a lot of crucial experience from Kizno, and now we're just gonna watch Winnie consistently re basically just remove Kizno from the game. You're gonna keep invading him, you're gonna keep setting him behind, and being behind as Wukong is one of the worst feelings as a jungler. Bro, it's it's so, so awful because you're thinking, all right, I guess I just have to farm and leave my laners alone. They want to call out that quick peep, uh, from Grapes as well with Skytech playing his 18th unique champ in the bot lane. Impressive across the board as he said. Yeah. As he says, to let the chef cook. And Winston <laughs> had mentioned their style is to let them cook. And right now, they are using up their wrist like a stir fry. Yeah, I will say, uh, Skytech doesn't always cook something good with some of those unique picks, but he's always <laughs> able to throw people for a loop. And the Blitzcrank being a good one this time around has been a big part of this 4-0 Tristana that we're seeing here. And right now, Supernova have nothing to play for. Kizno is still level three, has gotten just a couple of camps, really only two of them, and maybe like a little chicken nugget somewhere along the board. But mm -hmm. with that, with Quacker being in such a dominating position just because of how this matchup goes early on, A, we have everything they need in this early game. <sighs> Yeah, it's to go back to the point I was trying to make before, you know, everything all, all that happened was that when you had mentioned that they were dominating every scrim they had against every OQ team. They had not lost a single one. And that dominance and permanence is what they wanted to bring out here today. And if this doesn't put a sentiment and statement onto what we we're already kind of expecting as we got into the early game, then I don't know what will. But I'm still willing to, you know, hold my breath a little bit more. Because if you remember, Supernova started off just as hot. So what I want to see after this point is how they translate more of these leads. You know, yeah. does Darkwing rotate well, early? Do we see more of a presence from Winnie bot side? Yeah. I mean, so far, it makes sense too that Winnie is going to be spending a lot of time bot side, but you, he's also looking for these invades to keep denying camps from Kizno. He's two levels up right now yeah. on this Wukong removing Kizno's ability to really participate in much of anything. So you're going to see uh, Winnie show up bot side at times. And right now, it's actually Kizno looking for an opportunity. Okay. Speaking of which, as a... Uh, ooh, nice stun. Knock up onto one. And that should be another gift over to... Winnie's level six. Mm, trying to go in. Has the angle for the ultimate. 
they are decently far there we go i should ramp up as they go in they are a little ways away trying to target selecto but links immediately gets focused down oh that's a big Should've shutdown one more assist nice shutdown like we said and now winston what well, winnie i should say he's talking one more oh but the kitty nah i can't get it Wow, so that ends up being amazing for Supernova in their bottom lane. We talked about Azog and Chookies. This time around, they didn't get that early dominance that we see in a lot of their matches, even how well they played in game one. But look at this. Kizno finds the opportunity. They cancel Skytech's back. And this is Skytech and Lynx really thinking that they can win this one. This is kind of the folly at times of AoE gold. The fact that it's a great play, you lose Skytech, but because of the gold, because of the experience advantage that Winnie has, they look for this. They look for the fights that they can, and Lynx rocket jumps, uh, rocket jumps in. And they're really not respecting the fact that well, Varus is a lane bully for a reason. And when you pair it with Renata, with that bailout program, he's able to do a lot. Yeah, because you saw already jumping in. He, he just thought it was so low that yep. a lot of it just ended up being null and void. And as right now, I think whether Supernova have found the equalizer a little bit in the lane. I was thinking, you know, how does AoE translate to the leads? But now at least on their side, and they've, uh, you know, at least uh, can breathe a little bit easier as Kizno gets some, like one of his camps back at least. So, yeah, nice. I, I mean, you can see the farm that he has. Like, it's unreal right now. Only a handful of camps to his name while Winnie is cresting about 60 CS in his favor. And now we're seeing AoE despite the catastrophe bottom side. Let's call it what it is. You still have a really easy time getting that Rift Herald and it should still give AoE that opportunity to be able to snowball what they what gold they've picked up in this early game. So you can easily gank bottom side, easily get plates for this Tristana who takes turrets very quickly and just continue to try and build and push an advantage. Yeah. Cause we knew this bot lane match was gonna be pretty decent off for Tristana just you know throughout, but range eventually will be in their favor. True. For now though. Once again, Chucky's and Azog looking for a sneaky play, perhaps. The wave comes in. Level six I Azog. He has shield bow now. I don't know if they're aware of this. They could just try to fire his guy tech once again. Oh, oh wow. Close, 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 close. They get the pull. That's nice. Flash immediately. The guardian will save him. Yeah, really nice dodge there from Skytech. If that chain of corruption lands, insta kill coming through here. And I like that from Azog and Chookies, despite the struggles early on. With the help of Kizno, they managed to turn things around. Yeah, um, but he can uh, turn things around. Oh my god, quick! Oh, the Fong Turrets actually does it. And once again, we go down towards the bot side. Skytech will be focused in on. Nice knock up. Gets the pullback. Not in power range, though. As Lynx immediately flashes. Um, There's no god. Oh, bailout not going to work. That'll be the kill. Oh, they want more. So Skytech to go in once again. This time it's a 2v2. Lynx gets auto onto Chucky's. Winning with the focus. They should be able to do this. And now the pot from the bomb. And Lynx finally gets his. Winnie? Okay, I thought he was gonna go for it, but this is what I was talking about here. You have the Rift Herald as well, Lynx is in the area, even with the low health, there is an option for you to drop it here and now, but they'd rather get the wave in. This is the more impressive thing. You know Dragoon has the ultimate, the healing, and Quacker, aggressive as hell, even commits both summoner spells, and he just sends it, that confidence. He's like, nope, I got this. And even though he goes one for one, yeah. uh, he, I mean, he manages to pick up the kill but the big thing to watch for here again is i mean one sky tech just ticks over to level six kizno again trying to impact this bottom lane but that gold onto links and winnie especially is what turns things around here yeah just the 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 link up down bottom and we were talking about previously as well that will winnie be the ones you know calm down how much and how long until he looks to focus up here again but speaking back to the game as Dark Wings and Sky Tech try to get Onap, but Kizno around for the team again. Kizno seems to be right place, right time so often in this early game here, Vita. Yeah, I will say props to Onat. Both la both laning phases so far, AoE have thrown quite a bit at him, and he's managed yeah. to avoid dying in those first 15 minutes. Doesn't even blow his flash that time. Knows the predict is coming through. Uh, but Dragoon gets no shot on right once again. What? Oh my God! If he lands maybe one more Q, he does it, but. Our steel not stacked up enough, and he has no armor either. 
One and three. Tough, tough goes, but it's okay. He's Mundo. He'll yeah. be fine, Copia. Yeah, I mean, but still, props to Quacker using that early advantage yeah. to keep it pushing. Yeah, and speaking of keeping things pushing so far, Sky Second Winnie linking up onto Kizno. And they take the kill, man. Even Darkwing's coming down. Speaking back to that mid jungle synergy once again that we said that we said we would probably be there. Oh, but the pullback. The jump over, Azok <laughs> just launched away, but Lynx jumps into them, trying to get the trade. The bailout should be enough. Oh, Ooh, it's not. Into the bush, and they come down once again to save them. The fancy feed is crazy with Lynx. AoE just winning all across the board here. Again, the fact that they managed to deny so much from Kizno is really paying dividends now. The fact that he is just so far behind in farm, so far behind in items compared to literally everyone else on the ref just gives them too much advantage. Azog and Chookies turning things around in this early game, picking up kills for themselves, isn't enough to make up for the difference in gold between these junglers right now. And now Tristana gets a turret to her name, and you can see that gold lead shoot right back up for Lynx. And AoE did not want to bank anymore on their opponents making their mistakes as they spoke about what they have throughout the split. Going into the promotion tournament, they want to show that they're going to win and looking to do so through individual leads and translate them into even bigger dominant showings. And well, because it'd be back and forth this entire series uh, show they have as ah, it's a close hook from Sky Tech is again. They are, both these teams are very active on the map. Right, and this is the AoE that we are used to seeing. When you're behind against them, it is brutal to play against because Winnie and the rest of this team will just continue pushing you, will continue trying to remove you from the game here. And now Kizno, of course, playing to really the best win con you have available, this bottom lane in the Varus. So you're hoping that you can take out Dark Wings, but he has ult and flash, so yeah, you know. Yeah, he's fine. He just walks out of that. Yeah. Immediate just uh, teleport towards the other side of the lane, technically. But we haven't talked a ton about this bot side. We, you know, mentioned a lot in the previous game on how we were expecting it to, you know, be very tumultuous. Speaking of tumultuous, okay. Auto just All right. Solos him. Hold on, Azog. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have the shield bow yet. He used the fate seal. This is a really nice push play coming through from Azog. Again, be able to pick up some more extra gold between him, uh, between his individual performances and his plays with Chookies. Some yeah. good stuff, and it's, it's a bit of a reprieve, but Supernova still have to do so much more. This gold lead is titanic, and so much of it is still on, in the bottom lane, still in the top jungle, and it's just so hard to deal with as Supernova. Yeah, it... It's just get tougher and tougher for themselves as they get, you know, locked in a sort of corridor. But wanted to try to go back to what I said before is that Mundo was going to do a ton. We were mentioning how the, both Quacker and Dragon were going to continue to fight things out. We spoke about the previous history uh, as laners as well. And we mentioned how Dragon wouldn't have gotten the match, uh, just the better the matchup at times. But Quacker sliding into the role and now even having the advantageous. Uh, you know, lay matchup as well. He looks as good as Dragoon did in the previous game. And it just shows that, you know, both, you know, which just shows that we, even with the last minute decision that AoE had to make to, you know, find who can split up for Gamsu, they've right. done a really good job to, you know, uh, to have somebody to fit in the play style as they take the apparel. So far, Quacker, he's fitting in just right on top of uh, the system they already have. Winnie, who's been honestly still the rock for this team all split long and dark wings who we had some questions about throughout most of the nacl spring split but towards the end he actually managed to show us some improvement managed to turn things up with his performances so these two very exciting on this team on top of their new top laner yep Ooh. okay and now we'll see how aoe looks to play themselves around the map for now the vision completely dark thank you observers for for the side of supernova as well so yeah, we're taking, we're taking a lot of advantages of that too, hiding in the bushes around the lane, so if they catch anybody out to push Supernova further, further back into a hole. They do show on vision. Oh, not get spotted. Has to flash. A lot of damage put down. And as Azania takes away, that'll be gifted over to Lynx. Oh boy, and that vision again, just being such a big point here for AoE. Something Supernova wants to improve on is just avoiding. 
uh, I mean, getting into these situations where you mm. are really far behind in that vision war. Right now, of course, AoE's gold is insane, and that's a big part of what is allowing them to go for plays like these, to set up vision the way they have. Because you look at this bottom side, I mean, with mid and bot pushed in, with these wards in that bot side jungle, this is basically a no-fly zone. Once you get past <laughs> where any two tier it tier two is or would have been, that's illegal territory. Yeah, that's uh as tough going right now with Supernova, but Yeah. Nonetheless, so we'll see what they can do. It's still oh right now going back to a neutral state. Oh god, look at jungle. Only the second lead. Oh man. That's what Yeah. Like that's uh at this point. We, yeah. We, we we don't do math on stream, but that's a big number. That's that's all that's all we need to know here. And I, look at Winnie yeah. at the moment here. Again, is that early invade that AOE managed to snowball really well, despite some stumbles on that bottom side there. I mean, I say stumbles, but it's more like Azog and Chucky's kind of tripping them, saying like, oh, sorry, you're not going to be able to run away with this as fast <laughs> as you're hoping. Yeah. But ultimately, it's still such a big lead here. Now he has a Herald to play with, and with only two tier twos left, are many places where Winnie is really going to be looking to drop this? Oh, not at all. As we, as we look at him rolling around the entire map, right? He's still around, more so the top end too. We were speaking about how him and Quack are having linking up a lot throughout the split. And talking to Winnie as well too, he mentioned how, you know, a lot of the lanes have been on the same page, especially him and Darkwings. They're improving themselves throughout the entire split. So, currently as well, seeing that both of them controlling two opposite ends of the map, but... Now you gotta slow them down, pushing Dragoon back, Link's isolated, you get the knockoff. Look at Darkwings! Kizno, huge damage coming out from Darkwings. Finds the flank, makes it a one for one. Link's still alive, Dragoon goes where he pleases though. And as they weave Index back into the fights, they're all bunched up as three, a double kill for Azog, as he has all the hours he could ever need. An easy assist though, but cannot oh. find it. It'll Cracker be on the more. Cracker. Flash Ghost gone, but he is strong enough, but not that strong though. Right, and that's a really good angle there from Supernova. They knew Quacker was on the top side. They managed to get a lot of gold once again. Onat, Azog able to output so much DPS in these fights. They are not the ones who are really that far behind when you look at this gold deficit. So that's why you see if Supernova can get these angles, especially when Quacker is late to the party. That's how they managed to be able to maybe get some gold back into their pockets here they still lost a good bit but these even exchanges favor them and we'll see it this is the angle they drop the herald you can literally see quacker on the mini map actually both solo landers being away from the mid lane so there are several seconds where the full five of aoe are not in the picture and that's really what pays off here as we are uh uh going going on a trip guys yeah we're yeah. we're slowly drifting look at those away. towers they're so pretty <laughs> It's nice, you know, I, I thought like we don't get to appreciate some of the drift enough. The Most design, I agree. And we won't get to either anymore. <laughs> Starkwings takes so much damage, has to get out. Winnie there blocking for him, but nice almost catch up for Supernova. Yeah, this is an angle where Baron might be something you look for. You're so far behind. It's going to still take a flip like that to really get yourselves back into this one. But they don't want to mess with it, even though Darkwings doesn't have teleport. Supernova, because AoE don't have their soul point yet, it's coming up in about a minute 30, they're okay just kind of getting what they can, clearing vision and farming because they are still waiting to reach these crucial item spikes and there isn't really the threat of a dragon soul on the horizon. So they're okay with this, as okay as you can be with a game state like this. So they're just gonna continue trying to farm things out. I mean, we see what Dragoon's able to do at this point yeah. now with two items. He's stacking the hard steel. He's got a lot of health. And uh, of course, because it's Mundo, it means he's got a, a, a very healthy and very okay amount of AD. Yeah. Huge as I am. It's very cool. Fan of that. I agree. I'm. I love it personally. See, one of us is being sarcastic. Can I you know, guess who? And one of us being completely serious. Yeah. Which yeah. One? Exactly. Find to let us know in the comments down below. <laughs> On the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But now what both these teams are practicing is what uh, we were saying was uh, going to be one of the biggest points coming into uh, the promotion tournament was their discipline. Both of them had mentioned that you know. Throughout the split, I find things are starting to slip away from them a little bit. But you can see AoE being very patient with the vision they have set up, looking to set up accurate flanks, which they know they cannot come out of the advantage on. And there's exactly that. Kizno is definitely caught. Oh, okay. Huge 
flank from Dark Wings. Knock up onto almost everyone. Azog and Kizno Paul Dragoon is caught as the rest supernova gotta get out of it. They thought they could push S5 in the mid lane, but again, that gold lead is too much when it's that 5v5. And, okay, Skytech's gonna get out. It's a Baron play coming through here. You don't get anything as Constellation. Supernova are trying to push this mid lane, trying to walk down for Dragon, but this Baron's already out of the picture, and the rest of the team can just walk down to this bottom side river, and they can force Supernova away. Yeah, Supernova right now does have Azok coming up in the next five seconds. So they are ready for the 5v5 potentially, but crucially though, they don't have a couple ultimates up for them right now. Specifically the hostile takeover from the side of Chucky's, which can be game changing if landed at the right position. And they know, Dragon's gonna go way too fast, cannot fight for it, only soul point though. But the gold lead beat out the gold lead, 12,000 gold yep. in the favor of AoE. It continues to balloon, and even though you're reaching some good item spikes for the members of Supernova, I mean, AoE have reached them and surpassed them so with stopwatches to boot. So even if you manage to get a good fight angle, Lynx has that extra bit of safety. On top of everything else Tristana offers, and the summoner spells Lynx is coming into this one with. So it's going to be a miracle for Supernova to come back in this one. It's been a great showing from AOE, both in game one, but especially in game two. And this all started from that level one. Mm -hmm. Supernova has definitely shown the growth a lot throughout all the OQs, but nice, uh, nice catch out the pullover as Skytech has just been a Whoa. beast. But wait, the turnaround might be huge. Dracula's staying alive through all of it. Not enough, the Lynx fire towards the backside. And the knockout part to so many He's more. He's still alive? He's just running at them. Oh my God, Quacker. Can you find where the duck is quacking who's pawn? One more down as he lays down his territory and smacks him with a lightning. Oh my goodness, it looked good for a moment, but we were waiting for Quacker to arrive. And it's just gonna be only two for the entirety of Supernova. They still have the Baron to play for. They're gonna be knocking on the base's doors and we're just looking at this point, it seems like the death throws here for Supernova. An inhibitor is going down, most likely two. I mean, this is Tristana we're talking about. They could try to push for end if they really wanted to, but they're looking happy with two inhibitors. Yeah, they most definitely are. They wanted to pull in somebody game ready. They wanted to pull in someone who they know could, they could rely on to allow Winnie to play on the other ends of the map. And this is that, all that, and more. Quacker has shown up in a massive way in this series, especially now on this all offense. The rest of the team could really cascade their lead as Supernova, like you said. A miracle, maybe so, but I think God might have to descend on this game himself to stop them from losing. <laughs> well, they did manage to hold on to that top inhibitor, but we're at a 15,000 gold lead here yes. for AoE. And at this point, they're just going to be walking around the map, looking for plays as they see fit. And Supernova, their only option is what we're seeing here. What we've been seeing the last five minutes or so, overload on a side lane, see if someone is overextended and take them out of the picture. At this point, I don't think they can do that to Quacker from what we just saw in that last team fight. But you know, Dark Wings, you catch Witty out, super killable. And with this Dragon Soul coming up in two minutes, it's really the last opportunity for Supernova to get something done in this game too. Mm. Top calls all around for them. Let's see if we can find something back. There was an opportunity before where they were caught out by the hook from Sky Tech, which he was looking to set up once again, using a look at the vision cascading across the entire top and bottom end of the map entire beautiful v that they got going on as supernova is just, is just stuck in their base no oh shot. my god are you joking man they're a hostile takeover for a couple of seconds but what does it matter azar popping off but it's only the ga they're gonna try to get him back but winnie there pushes them away dragoon pops the ultimate but oh hello anything more as they chase down azog that's the damage dealer the top and hip gone and all five are up a o e take the game 2-0 as they move on to the promotion tournament in acl that's right one last fight coming through here but this is going to solidify it aoe only need one more win now to make it back into nacl of course we're gonna have a little fun before we close things out here, Ravish. Naturally as we should, and why wouldn't we? So there we go, there's the pop from the Nexus. Dominance 
and nothing short of it, my friend. Incredible yeah. stuff from them. There's a reason why when we looked at that bar graph, we all had AOE at the tippity top with uh, some exceptions. Not gonna yeah, yeah, name I mean, names or anything. Who knows? Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, okay. If you wanna say it, it was you. But the point is there was a reason for that. AOE at the start of spring months ago in January, we all were talking about how we agreed that this was a team that was meant to not get, uh, to not, not make it back into the promotion uh, tournament here. Even mm -hmm. if they came here, we had a lot of confidence that they would be able to make it back to NACL, and this is a great start. Yeah, fantastic even, and we'll get to hear from one of their players after this quick break that we'll throw it to. See you in a bit. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Ryzen Post game interview. I have Winnie on the line from AOE Gold to talk a little bit about what went down. Hello, first off, congratulations on the 2-0, but I'm curious, how were you envisioning the series playing out? Was that kind of what was expected? Yeah, I think obviously we didn't... Uh, I'm familiar with some of these players, but obviously they have a, they have a newer, newer jungler. Uh, haven't played as much against their mid, so there were specific things we were looking out for when we were you know doing our scouting reports and all that, but... Obviously, there are going to be some unfamiliar, unfamiliar arities or, or however you say it. But yeah, anyways, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, obviously, there's always going to be some unknowns. We went into that knowing that. But in terms of my individual jungle match, I'm confident going into anyone, especially this original match that we're going to this tournament. You know, he's he's a rookie. had to show him the ropes as, you know, an NACL vet by now. But but yeah, no, I, definitely, I think the first the first game, there was a bit of, you know, a bit of nerves has been a bit since we've actually played an official match outside of, you know, screens, which have been going well. But yeah, I, I was glad that we t we stepped it up the second game. We stuck to the game plan. Obviously, there's still some undisciplined things we got to work on, but yeah, pretty satisfied with how the second game went. First game, uh, I think we really resorted on individual skill alone to win that game. So obviously, things to work in uh, review from there. But yeah, I think overall, it was, it was a good day and we got the job done. So that's what matters. And you tweeted out as well about something something but basically see you in summer so it definitely seems like the confidence is high that the team's gonna make it out of the promotion tournament unscathed and we'll be seeing you play in challengers in summer so talk to me a little bit about that is that how you envisioning the run going and if so why is it just the team difference whereabouts is that from yeah i mean everything i mean i've always been a competitor my whole life and going into whatever type of competition that i'm that i'll be participating in i've i always have the mindset you know to be a killer to just that i'm you know i'm the best one out there and i need to do what's necessary in order to win um that's just i don't i don't see the point in competing if you aren't doing that so i just i pour everything into it and obviously going to this obviously competing in nacl and being you know i'd say an average team you know we had a pretty we had a 50 50 rec regular season took out some academy teams during uh the promotion tournament just my individual just confidence in myself i just know kind of going into these things uh what i'm able to showcase um, so yeah, going into this, never going anything with a losing mentality. Uh, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to win, and it's my goal. Obviously, I think, like I said, we had a we we didn't all right uh, an ACL split, but I want to show, especially coming into summer, it might be my last opportunity to kind of show what I individually think I can deserve in the level that I can play at, and I want to show that, and I don't want to have regrets kind of about my career. So. So yeah, just especially since I'm investing so much time into it, just want to make the most of it. You have to have a confident mindset. And I've realized, especially like the more you play these high stake matches, the players that can actually compete at that pro level and who are made for kind of that spotlight are the players that can deal with the pressure and don't, you know, don't fold under it, don't play differently, don't let that emotional ability affect their gameplay. Uh, so yeah, so just going into it, just confidence, making sure my teammates feel the same way. And I want to do whatever it takes for all of us to be able to win and compete again and showcase ourselves in summer. Definitely sounds like a great mentality around it all. So that's definitely a bright spot for you. And then you mentioned a little bit about the shortcomings. I know that you have the reflectiveness to be able to know what's going on. So what has been a couple of the shortcomings and what's being fixed on that we should expect to see in that turnaround come summer? For sure. I think it was my, obviously it was a lot of our first opportunities, you know, competing at a higher level. Obviously we were dominant in the amateur the amateur split the prior season, but it's it's definitely a shift where you have to start realizing there's a lot of other intangibles that it takes. You can't just rely on your individual ability playing the game um, in order to be successful as a professional. Um, especially this is something that Katie, our coach who's, who's really stepped up uh, these past couple of weeks has really taught me. It's just, you have to have a really healthy, healthy balance uh, just in your overall lifestyle in order to compete at your highest level and have that longevity of a career um that includes you know healthy schedules in terms of what you're eating sleeping all these things that 
uh, and just you know having a schedule, having a routine, um, incorporating things to calm your mind, things of this nature. A lot of factors outside of the game that at first it was because they weren't really habits of mine. It was it, it was definitely a uh, it was like a stretch to implement them. But I feel like I'm starting to come to that point, you know, that maturity level where I realize what I need to do outside of the game, and especially just as long with prep. I think a lot of the individual games we definitely have the individual level, but it's about coming bringing it together. Uh, on a timeline just understanding different patches patch or patch but but yeah just like that discipline factor i think that's something that a lot of our teammates uh, yeah and me as well as other ones are really working on just um just yeah just really trying to better ourselves because we definitely have the individual ability it's just about bringing it together and just just even like our discipline our approach to practice n make sure we're not we're using all our time well um just yeah we just really have to have that hunger that that want factor because the players especially like i, I like to the one sport outside of league that like I enjoy is basketball and, and all the people that are the most successful and have really long careers are the people who hmm. take care of themselves, take care of their mind, and who really want it. You know, examples Giannis, LeBron, all these players, Steph, these just really inspirational figures. And obviously I think you can take some of what they've learned as well as just other teachings from what other people can teach you and implement here. So yeah. So just think a lot of those like, you know, building those healthy habits and just really wanting it, I think is just really important in order to be a successful team in NCL. And I think uh fear is an example of people who show that, so yeah. I mean, that's definitely great going forward. And you talked about coming together, and that would also be as a team. But going into this, there is that shakeup, having a new top lane in Quacker. So how has he kind of been slotting into the team? How has that kind of changed things, team dynamic or anything? Yeah, so um, Michael's a new, a fresher player. I started becoming familiar him, familiar with him a bit in uh, when I was back on Wildcard, the really successful run I had um, a couple years ago. Uh, he was he was our junior top at the time, and I kind of like observed him. We when we were kind of going through the process of selecting a new player after we heard the news about Gamsu. Obviously, he's a veteran, a really established player. He's done a, obviously he's been to Worlds, he's been successful in on um, the academy space, and obviously losing him is a big voice. But I think it also provides a lot of growth for our team. Not having that dependence on someone who has a lot of guidance, it really pushes us to improve, to grow, and. I think it also helps the communication structure and you know it, it feels more comfortable sometimes communicating ideas and i think he's really receptive to criticism he's, he's a player who he's a really select pool and that was something we really uh admired and appreciated especially the confidence and you know the fact that he really wanted to showcase it was an opportunity and a platform through this team to showcase himself in this tournament so yeah i think he's so far in scrims he's been uh everything that we've expected and more you know he's been really receptive to criticism like i said just is a really strong established player. I think in the first game, obviously, like I said, a couple, couple nerves, couple like little things, just you know, testing your limits a bit, you know. But I think as soon as he started to settle down, you saw in the second game he really came into his own, and that's something we'll be expecting and leaning on him to do uh, in the coming series. And yeah, I just think he's, he's. I hope he continues to use this opportunity to really, you know, showcase himself as a player, and especially with him finishing up school. That I know, I know that he definitely wants to pursue this career and. I like his like kind of disciplined approach to practice just as an individual and with the team. He understands the mistakes he make. He's good to accept them and also um, share his mind as well as, you know, it, it's, it's really easy to communicate with him and he's really professional. So yeah, a lot of great things coming out of him and I hope to see uh, more from him. So yeah. I think we're all excited to see, especially with the ending of that last game with where Crackers yeah. are going to go and excited for the next series because you're going to mm -hmm. be either playing up against the last dance or up against Maryville University. Is there a particular opponent that you want going up against or someone that you think that you're going to be seeing next time? Yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I mean, in terms of me, I definitely want to, if it is Maryville that, for, that advances, I definitely want to face them. I've, I've, I've only faced outside of like, you know, some of the amateur splits and the, the things I remember, I've played them in like two finals now. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, I was obviously playing in different type of teams, different type of environments um, where there was a lot of like, uh, you know, where they got the better of us. And yeah, I just think going to this, you know, I'm confident, like I said, confident going into any players, you know, Otter is just a good friend of mine. And uh, I think like, yeah, with this roster, I'll be able to really, you know, showcase um, kind of the difference between us. And yeah, I, I, really, I really want that matchup. Uh, be a really big confidence boost and able to take them out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm satisfied with either. I'm not really focusing on a specific player, specific teams, but, but yeah, we're, we'll, we'll get the job done, whoever it is. And, uh, we'll be watching, uh, their upcoming series. Yeah. We'll see what, we'll see what they have to offer. And then, uh, we'll see what, you know, we'll showcase in the coming days against them. Well, we'll find out who soon, who you're going up against, cause it's the next series. But last thing to wrap things off here is if you have any final words or any shout outs that you would like to give before I let you go and hang out with the team. Yeah. Uh, just showcase shout out to all my teammates i think they've been doing a really good job especially not um especially uh links in that in the first game he was really 
uh, stable. He was someone we could rely on when there was a lot of individual mistakes we were making. Um, I think he just really handled the situation well, especially being one of those newer players and just all my teammates, especially my staff, I think over the past couple of weeks when I knew that we were playing into this tournament, obviously um, everyone stepped up, but it's in a sense where, you know, we, we, we aren't taking things for granted. We understand the position we're in and we put ourselves in this position. So it's about, um, you know, doing what we think is right and just, you know, continuing to love to compete and all that. And uh, also shout out to my family and friends back home. I think I, I realized kind of throughout this split, I really like kind of tunneled on the league and I didn't show, and since it was like my first time living away from them, I didn't um, like show as much appreciation to my family as much as they were showing me. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, a, a lot, they've like, you know, contacted me like a lot and I've tried to, you know, with I said, like balancing those healthy habits, create a lot more time for them because they're really supportive of what I do. Um, so yeah, so I just want to continue to make them proud, make them happy, you know, it's really, my mom's like one of the, like, the cutest people in the world and just seeing like the things she sends or says and stuff, it's, yeah, it's heartwarming. So yeah, I just want to continue to make them proud and get this, get the job done and then uh, obviously we'll have a break and then continue to compete in summer split because it's, it's my passion, it's what I do and I, it's, it's where I know right now in my life I belong. So, so yeah, I just want to continue to make all those people proud. Well, you definitely have the support around you, which is absolutely lovely to see. And I have to thank you, Winnie, so much for the insightful interview. I hope you have a great rest of your day, okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. As for us, we still have a series on the horizon. We're going to be taking a short break, but after this, it's going to be the last dance going up against Maryville University.